Okay, I'm going to review uh, Abraxas uh, 1970 album by the Latin rock band Santana. Uh, it became the band's first album to reach number one in the US. And the title originates from a line in Herman Hesse's 18, uh, 1919 book, Damien, uh, quoted on the back cover. We stood before it and began to freeze inside from the exertion. We questioned the painting, berated it, made love to it, prayed to it. We called it mother, we called it whore and slut, called it our beloved, called it Abraxas. Well, there we are. <laughs> now, uh, uh, let's get on to uh, another thing worth mentioning, I think. And uh, I'd like to refer to... Uh, cover of the album which features the 1961 painting Annunciation by German French painter Max Clavine. According to the artist it was one of the first paintings he did after relocating to New York City and Carlos Santana re reportedly noticed it in a magazine and asked that it be the cover of the band's up and coming album and on the back of the sleeve the cover art is credited to Matt. It's considered a classic rock album cover, uh, and this uh, painter went on to design further album uh, covers, notably uh, Miles Davis, Herbie Hancock, Irvin Wynn and Fire, and Greg Orman. I think that was laid back. Um, it's regarded as ranked at number 205 in Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. Uh, and it's been deemed culturally, historically and aesthetically aesthetically significant uh, as an album uh, in the International Recording Registry and it's got a few uh, covers on it notably Black Magic Woman which is really re written by Peter Green from Fleetwood Mac Gypsy Queen uh, written by Gabo Zabo and uh, Teo Puente Oya Coma Va uh, the rest are credited to members of the band and uh, the band being and there will be a slide of course Carl Santana on lead guitar, backing vocals, and he produced the album. Greg Rowley on lead vocals and keyboards. David Brown plays bass. Michael Sreeze on drums. Jose Chepito Arias is on percussion, conga, and timbales. And Michael Caraballo plays percussion, conga, and uh, also has a credit for keyboards on the opening track. Uh, and additional personnel. Uh, Alberto G. Quinto, Quinto is on piano on Incident and Neshaba and Rico Reyes plays uh, sings backing vocals on Oya Comava and he also adds in some percussion on El Nicoya and uh, the bass player is involved in the engineer uh, and uh, that's probably about it Opening track then from Abraxas 1970 Santana. Uh, I haven't listened to this album for uh, probably in excess of 20 years, but as soon as the opening sort of notes cascaded all over me, it brought back some fantastic memories. Um, it's got this spaciously wonderful piano by Rowley. Uh, with uh, a crescendo of, of uh, percussion and drums before we get into some sort of sense of rhythm and then Carlos joins the party with his spiralling lead guitar runs and then we're off and it's just under five minutes it's called Singing Wings and Crime Beast and uh, that just about sams it up. A fantastic title, Singing Winds. It certainly does blow hot uh, in parts 
and has a soothing sort of aspect to it. The, 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 the piano is really beautiful by Rolly. It's sort of punchy and sort of random like and frenetic all at once. And uh, the uh, congas and uh, uh, underneath it all just creating that Latino feel. And now we're going to segue in to the Peter Green song Black Magic Women, which also segues into Gypsy Queen, a five minute uh, tour de force. But um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Black Magic Woman, either by Peter Green, uh, because it was a traditional blues then, or the Santana inspired, this is really uh, something that everybody ought to be adorned with. It's a piece of majestic brilliance with the, the spiralling guitar. After Rowley's uh, confident, competent vocal, we then launch into the absolutely wizardry of Gypsy Queen, which starts out rolling with the, the drums and and then just becomes frenetically Latino percussive uh, as we go at a ferocious pace uh, for the final couple of minutes. Unquestionably brilliant. The uh, frantic uh, piece of work uh, of Gypsy Queen written by uh, Gabo Zabu but the work of uh, Jose Chapita Arias on congas and timbalas and Michael Carabello on conga and additional percussion is right off the charts um, and uh, it's really one of the highlights really of uh, any piece that uh, Carlos has ever put together and then we're segueing into the next gem Oe Koma Va. Oe Koma Va is a traditional Puerto Rican uh, Latino song written by Tito Ponte. He uh, was an American uh, whose parents are from Puerto Rico. A very famous sort of uh, uh, inspirational musician uh, from the uh, Latin samba style of music, uh, also quite influenced by Cuban music and uh, this rip-roaring version um, is very striking, a great tempo um, and I guess it's pretty standard fare uh, for that style of music. Incident at Neshiba is next and this is a, a very impressive piece of work. It's got lots of time changes. You, you've got some scintillating uh, a, a piano uh, by the guy who co-wrote the song. Uh, uh, let me just get his name. Uh, Alberto Gianquinto. Uh, and alongside him, of course, are Greg, Greg Rowley, who's playing the keyboards uh, with... Uh, considerable to com com competence it's got some very jazzy influenced style on piano with uh, Carlos's guitar sort of uh, showing how adept he is with different genres uh, I have a confession to make that uh, uh, there ain't no uh, great uh, Neil Sean on this, he arrived on album 3 so it's just a single lead guitar here um, the time changes, we go from a very brisk sort of keyboard driven start to the slow sort of melodic uh, Santana guitar which is joined by the piano uh, which has a, a as I say a very a jazz, slow jazz, uh, sumptuous lounge feel. And behind all this, of course, are the 
expert percussion guys Mike Shreve on drums of course uh, with uh, Chipites and Carabello uh, showing how uh, competent they are uh, in creating that sort of samba latino uh, bass rhythm uh, and mentioning bass very competent by David Brown uh, so it's really a very strong piece of work and it, it basically uh, sees us ending uh, the first side. It's an instrumental. A brisk Seagabo is uh, the opener to the second side. It's uh, basically one of those fantastic Latin percussion uh, frenetic uh, rhythm style type tracks but they throw in a, a really great guitar uh, lick by Carlos and the combining uh, keyboard uh, feel which uh, enriches the sound um, actually uh, I think the singing well it's no more than a chant really um, and it's basically uh, owned by uh, I think it's owned by uh, Jose Arias who chips in with the vo vocal here uh, uh, maybe not but he's certainly responsible for the writing of the uh, instrumental part of it and as I say uh, the vocals are no more than a chant uh, a repetitive uh, chant of Si El Gabo Si El Gabo ok strong start though so how do you like your music Fast and Furious well Mother's Daughter's up next written by Greg Rowley he's on vocals and it's a mixture of frantically fast rhythmic rock with uh, some lots of guitar from Carlos and the equivalent with uh, Roly on keyboards but the rhythm section uh, the percussion is furiously keeping the pace up and then it switches time uh, to enable Greg's sort of uh, vocal uh, on the calmer sort of uh, restrained uh, section with that gentle uh, uh, samba rhythm and we go through this fast and slow fast and slow over the four minutes it's a uh, pretty impressive probably the nearest you might get to what might be called rock uh, but of course there's still the Latin percussion to remind you that it's not it's not uh, it's not rock from the US or from Britain because it's got that Mexican flavor that's mother's daughter four and a half minutes what makes great albums well of course great tracks and I think this is why this is such a great album because we've got that absolutely tremendous black magic woman on the first side and on the other side we've got the immaculate samba party I always remember when I went traveling back in 1998 1988 1988 sorry uh, and you know, I was going to parts of the world that I'd never been to but I had a, a good idea of the sort of music that really turned me on and uh, I remember being quite surprised and taken aback when I landed in Bali in, in Indonesia and went out to get pretty plastered on the, the cheap ale and found the local bars had local music Balinese musicians uh, and they were turning their hand to one of the other great tracks of all time and I'm talking about Stairway to Heaven and these guys were playing it 
almost note for note perfect um, okay the vocals didn't quite sound like plant but the guitar playing was uh, uh, was absolutely an identical copy of Jimmy Pay's mastery and then when I moved further up through Asia into Thailand I then had the opportunity of going out to the bars again and repeated the dose of getting basically plastered and bar after bar that had a, a live band which was basically Thai musicians and I constantly kept on hearing uh, this live cut of Samba Pati and once again the Thai guitar players had seemingly learned note by note uh, the identical way of playing like Carla Santana uh, and it was for Samba Pati of course no singing here and so the band could sort of almost recreate the Santana sound and that's why this although many say is overplayed whenever you hear it whether it's be at a disco at a live event if you're lucky enough to see Santana live which I did in in, in London uh, many moons ago when this cut, uh, starts uh, couples gravitate to the dance floor and it creates that sort of emotionally romantic connection whether you're with a loved one from years back or whether you're just starting off a new relationship it gives you the opportunity to f be physically intimate and revel in how this song makes you feel with this person from the opposite sex uh, Carlos Santana's uh, instrumental uh, poise on this is is a highlight among highlights. It, many say it's his greatest hour. I'm not sure about that because there are some uh, highlights on every album, uh, but it is a wonderful instrumental, and it's. Uh, Samba Pati from the album Abraxas. So next up is Hope You're Feeling Better and Greg Rowley really comes to the fore on this, a strong vocal he's the, a songwriter as well, it's got an excellent groove on it uh, his organ is extremely powerful and he basically sort of uh, exchanges sort of uh, a lead uh, with uh, Carlos's guitar um, and the solos are awesome on it and uh, I think it's very expressive and uh, it's certainly a standout although initially it might seem to be a bit of a throwaway sort of uh, rock song um, but more than that I think once again though Carlos is um, I want to mention that his style he's he's got a very unique style you know if if the radio's on and a, a Carlos Santana song comes on you Im immediately can recognize it through his guitar style um, you know he'll never be he'll never be copied a hundred percent and uh, it's, this is a very strong tune. The final song is called El Nikoya and here we get really a return to the roots of this band which is the African uh, rhythms and beats uh, that's the foundation really for all uh, Latin influenced music and uh, uh, it's uh, actually owned by I think it's own I'm just running uh, sorry about the traffic we are in the middle of a town here uh, Jose Chepito Arias uh, is the owner of this uh, really strictly speaking uh, an instrumental with some tribal uh, singing and uh, Rico Reyes adds some uh, percussion on here. It is a percussionist, a percussionist dream, and uh, 
a suitable bookend really to this album to remind us of the roots of this band 